Allosaurus, Apatosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Dilophosaurus, Gigantosaurus, Megalosaurus, Spinosaurus, Stegosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Rex. I just love dinosauruses. You neglected to mention Triceratops. I beg to differ, my elder chum. Triceratops is one of the subspecies of Nautosaurus and wasn't quite worthy of a place on my most favorite list. Now let's get this program started, shall we? Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your presumptive paleontologist, yet indubitable movie host, Vincent, my ever-diligent butler to your left, who might quite possibly hail from the Jurassic period himself, is the voluble Mr. Livingston, and the lovely and loquacious lass straddling the inflatable velociraptor while channeling Holly from Land of the Lost is my rather creative housemate, Tangella. Do we have a dinosaur show in store for you tonight? First, we'll be featuring the legendary film from 1977, Planet of the Dinosaurs. A wonderful film about a spacecraft that lands on a planet entirely infested with large lizards. Why are we showing this one again? Because you said we could not get Jurassic Park. Because you said we couldn't afford it. Oh, fiddle fam. Everyone has seen that bloody film numerous times over. This film will be new to most. But forget the film, because the best part of tonight's show is our guest. For tonight, we'll be joined by the real Holly from Land of the Lost, the lovely and charming Kathy Coleman, who portrayed Holly on the original show. She'll tell us all about the making of that program, what it was like working with actual dinosaurs, and whether our little Tangella would make a suitable raft occupant on a routine expedition. So don't go away, because it's going to be another night of Fossil Age Fright, right here on Creature Features. That thing is quite loud. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Hey, it's Spooky Boo. Trouble sleeping at night? Need a little help? Relax and listen to some spooky, scary stories. I have ghosts and goblins, witches and demons, crazies and clowns. Check out Spooky Boo's Scary Storytime at www.scarystorytime.com. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today.
Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. It's Saturday night in your own creature features, but this is a good one. It's a super good one. You know why? Because we've got Kathy Colvin. The <laughs> Kathy Coleman. Holly from Land of the Lost. I've been trying to get you forever. I had no idea. You've I would ignoring, have come sooner. You've been ignoring my calls, my no, text messages. No, I have not. My smoke signals. The second I heard it was you on the line, I picked up. See? 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 It's been so many years since I've seen Land of the Lost, and I watched like 20 episodes last night. Wow. It's difficult to do on First YouTube. First or second season? Oh, all, all three. Oh, wow. It was three, right? Yes. Right. So the first one, or the first and the second, you had the dad, and then the third one, you had the uncle. Right. But the end theme became like rock and roll. Oh, the end theme, the, the end song is a good one. Who did that? When I look yes. all around. I can't believe the things I found. She's a singer Now I as need well. to find my way. I'm lost. I'm lost. Find me living oh, perfect tone. in the land. Where's the my lost, guitar? Lost, Livingston. Lost, 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 we need lost, my guitar. Lost. Who did that? Do, 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 do. Who did that? Uh, one? Wesley. Oh, he did. He sang the opening and the closing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That was him. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to talk about all this stuff. But okay. first, we're going to get to this film, Planet of the Dinosaurs. Have you seen it? Uh, yes, I have. And you like it? Let it rip. She likes anything dinosaurs, I bet. <laughs> I do, I do. I, I, I have so many questions for you because we've got I the whole... I cried at Jurassic Park. You cried at Jurassic Park? Uh, big time. I did not like it because it did not have Holly. <laughs> I think any dinosaur <laughs> film should have Holly in it. All right, let's get to the film and we'll come back. I'm gonna, right. I have a thousand questions for you. I'm you ready. You better be ready. All right, off we go. Planet of the Dinosaurs, you stay with us. Northside the bridge. Captain Northside the bridge. All personnel to emergency stations. Prepare to abandon the starship. Just went into action. Prepare to abandon the starship. Stand by for power thrust. Everyone strapped in. Blasting off now. Scan for survivors. Nyla, did any other shuttlecraft leave the mothership? Uh, I don't know. Check. 
No, only floating debris. And this? Unless they got out ahead of us and the force of the explosion drove them beyond scanner range. Captain Northside, the communications officer. Did you manage to send out an SOS? Yes, sir. I sent out a signal, but I don't know if anyone picked it up. The explosion. It just caused too much static. Captain, what the hell happened? The Odyssey disintegrated. Yes, I know. I can see that, but I'm asking what the hell happened. <laughs> I don't know. I am Vice President of Spaceways Incorporated. I'm holding you personally responsible for my safety. And the safety of my secretary, Derna. Secretary? Captain. <sighs> Nurse, can you help her? Right away, sir. Navigation, where are we? God knows. There are no charts for this area. Engineering, Jim, what shape are we in? We're functioning in a reserve only. We'll make it to that planet ahead. Scanner's showing acceptable oxygen level. The atmosphere is breathable. Keep her floating, Jim. We're gonna land her down there. Captain, we don't know what's down there. We have no other choice. We're coming in too fast. I need more control. We're caught in its gravitational pull. We don't have enough power to fight it. Everyone strap in. But we'll break up if we hit land at this speed. Captain, slow her down. Slow her fast, Mr. Baylor. We're landing. Captain, do the head. I'll see her something. That'll give us our soft landing. Everyone remain calm. Keep seated. Chuck, Mike, check the emergency hatch. All right, the easy swim to shore, but we're sinking fast. Everybody out. Get the survival equipment out quickly. Let's go. Goodbye, Mr. Baylor. We've landed on a planet with atmosphere. Life conditions much like Earth. Yeah, yeah. I hear that's not so rare. The problem is, where the hell are we? I mean, I gotta get to a radio phone or something. He's gotta be kidding. I don't know. Mr. Baylor, we have just come out of subspace, and we're light years away from any known civilization. What are you trying to tell me? This isn't Nebraska. There isn't any filling station down the road. There isn't any telephones. If there were, long distance rates would be something else. So we're lost. I don't know where we are. He doesn't know where we are. She don't know where we are. You don't know where we are. Didn't you send out an SOS? Yes, but I don't think it was received. Well, send it again, girl. Where is the distress transmitter? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot to tow it in. Oh, great, great. <laughs> you not only lose the spaceship, you almost drowned all of us. And you land us God knows where. And now you're telling me you lost the most valuable piece of equipment we had aboard ship? Captain, the next ship you get, you're gonna be the steward. 
It's designed to float. It's... It must be floating out there somewhere. I'll get it. Chuck? <laughs> Wait! I'll help you. That's okay. Chuck can do it. No, it's my job. Why did she come out there? To help me? Oh, Why? No, it's all right. It's I all didn't right. want... Well, the shuttle's gone and we've lost the radio. Yeah, and a human being. How do we stand with weapons? Uh, four lasers. Everybody, let's get the gear together and get out of here. Shall I take the right flank? Yes, you take the right. And Mike, you take the rear. Hello, hello, where, where are we going? Away from here. That thing may be amphibious. <laughs> Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Hello, I'm Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. Welcome back. We are still with Miss Kathy Coleman Holly from Land of the Lost. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I'm watching a dinosaur movie with Holly from Land of the Lost. I am beside myself. And the similarities to the this movie film. and our show I are know. uncanny. That's why we chose this film just for you. So just like on Land of the Lost, they go to another planet, which that was never clear on your show. But it was just mentioned, I saw three moons. The dad. Oh, we had three father. moons. What was his name? Rick Marshall. Rick Marshall. You mean the character or the right. actor? Rick, no, Rick Marshall. Rick Marshall. He says, he says he saw three moons, and that's how we knew it was on another planet, on your show. Right. But in this movie, it's like there's a spaceship crash landing. Right. So well, we crashed in our raft. You did? Yes. Your tiny raft on a 
routine expedition. Right, but it took a few episodes for us to start swimming. <laughs> right. We didn't just burst into, no, no, into a swim scene watched, in bikinis. I watched the pilot and the show <laughs> starts with the theme and then you're already like safe on shore. Yeah, well, we had just come from the water, so we probably mm. weren't too eager to get back in the water again. How did this all begin for you? Well, How did you I started. Like I started when I was five, right. just auditioning for commercials, and then uh, my mom had always promised me that if I ever got a series, because I always got a little reward for every commercial I got, right. and she said, if you ever get a series, I will get you that pony that you want. Oh no! So. The day I got Land of the Lost, my mom stayed true to her word, which is a valued lesson in my life, staying true to my word. And she bought you a pony. And she took me out that day and bought me a pony. And his name was Comanche, and the writers of on Land of the Lost let me say his name on the show. They wrote it into the script. How? I got to say, I miss Comanche. Oh, my goodness. I know. Amazing. That is wonderful. So the audition process, there was like probably... Seven callbacks. Seven callbacks. We had to meet everybody from the heads of NBC. Then they wanted to see if we all, you know, uh, had the chemistry right. together. And so they brought in. And then the funny thing is, one of my callbacks, I came in the door and uh, I saw Phil Paley, who was Chaka right. on the show. Well, he and I had just, you know, like a year before that, done the Cheez-Its commercial together. Oh, so you knew him? Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing here, Phil? And he says, I'm auditioning for the show Land of the Lost. This is my second callback. I said, so am I. Wow. And then we wound up working together again. That's fabulous. Yeah. So uh, there must have been like a thousand different girls who wanted this part. Well, actually... Uh, the week before Land of the Lost, there was a show called Run, Joe, Run. Right. And like 200 girls went out for that show. It was just for one episode. And it got down to Christy McNichol and myself. And Christy McNichol got it, and I didn't get it. But it would have been filming the day that I first auditioned for Land of the Lost. So it's but like was, God works in mysterious right, ways. Right, no, and I, I've never heard of that other program. And whereas Land of the Lost, I mean, they and made a movie from it. Right, and it's been on for 45 years. Right. It, it just has a life of its own. It just keeps festering into something else. Right. Well, speaking of festering into something else, <laughs> let's get back to this film. Okay, so We'll do good. some more comparisons. All right. All right, you guys stay with us. We'll be right back after the next break. I gave one of the lasers to Miss Lee. She dropped it when she got in trouble out there. You gave a weapon to a civilian? An hysterical civilian at that? She might have shot all of us. It seemed to comfort her. She was, she was frightened. Jim, how's the laser? Dead. Mike, you've cost us one of the few remaining weapons that we have. But by doing that, you've reduced our chances of survival by one gun. You're an officer. Behave like one. He only did what he thought was right, Lee. No, Jim. No one does what he thinks is right. You all do what I think is right. I'm in command here. Oh, no, Jim. The captain's right. I did a very stupid thing. I'm sorry. I'll cause no more trouble. I'll do as I'm told. Company. 
God. Look at the size of them. I'll go wake the others. Similar to Earth, similar elements bring about similar life forms. I never saw anything like that on Earth. Shh. It would have millions of years ago. Obviously, this planet is much younger than that of our Earth. Still want to stay here, Mr. Baylor? belong to that thing. Strange. That doesn't look like the print of an amphibian. Let's not wait to find out what it is. Let's just get out of here. here. Look! Over there! Oh, my God. It looks half eaten. What could have done that? Some very large predator. Lee, whatever made this print kill that animal. It's definitely not an amphibian. Oh, come on. What it can mean? roam anywhere, hunt anywhere. Come on. Let's go.
Let's get out of here. How are we going to get away from something that big? We find high ground and climb. Big awkward thing like that will never be able to climb rock walls. Come on. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. This is Livingston and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Miss Kathy had to step out, and uh, she's going to bring back some props, I think, in a bit. A dinosaur, perhaps. A dinosaur would be nice. You know, she likes dinosaurs. A bit more than her goats, I believe. No? I doubt that. When are you going to start making cheese? Uh, that's what goats are for. They've eaten all the plants. No, she just wants to hug them. All right. Well, let's do that letter thing, right? Right. This is the part where we read mail from you to us. And you've got long ones. I could tell he's got long ones for me tonight. I'm going to read quickly because I can do it. I'm good at these things. All right. First letter is from Marco Marganozo. I, help me here. Marganozo. Marganozo in San Francisco. And he goes, uh, hello to my favorite Saturday night trio. Short note, Killers from Space, a traditional sci-fi movie on creature features is always enjoyable. Much more than viewing a flick in which someone is getting their brains drilled out of their head. I know what he's talking about. Drill a killer. We showed that film. I, I, I protested. I did. I beg your pardon. I protested about that film. I don't like those types of film. I know you can't please everyone, but I would guess the largest portion of your viewers remember Bob Wilkins and John Stanley and truly enjoy these 1950s movies. They do, don't they? It's Indeed. True. Tonight's movie is not a 1950s movie, but we're going to get back to those soon. You'll see. P.S. One night you held up a Jiffy Pop popcorn. I haven't seen one of those in years. And we had one tonight while watching. Oh, the good old days. You know, I'd never seen that stuff before either. And I was quite amused at how this technology has improved. Jiffy Pop. Imagine that. You just shake it over the oven and you get popcorn. All right. Thanks for writing, Marco. What do we got next, Mr. Livingston? How are you, sir? I'm quite well, thank you. Are you staying out of trouble? I have no choice. Are you keeping this one out of trouble? That is the question. You know, I think she looks quite innocent in this outfit. Dressed as Holly. 
Do not judge a book by its cover. No, you definitely cannot judge that book by a cover. Speaking of books, we're going to see the Holly book soon. Run, Holly, run. Yeah. It's a good book. All right, here we go. This one is from Chuck from Redwood City. That's California, right? I believe so. Redwood City, California. Hey, Creature cl Crew. That's crew, right? Or clue. Crew. Creature Clue. Creature, creature crew. crew. All right. A double header win for Creature Features. Watching Horror Express with its starry cast plus Michael Berryman. Wow. But we said wow, too. That was a good That was a good episode. Thanks for having him on your show. I did not know much about him or the trials he went through in life, so your interview was very eye-opening. He seems like a really nice guy. He is. And perhaps I will get to meet him someday so we can have an ear-wiggling battle. That was unique. How, remember, he was able to move his ears. Yes. That's a skill. That's a skill I do not possess. Keep up the good work. P.S. Is Livingston the voice we hear in some of the commercial voiceovers? He has a very pleasant voice, you know. Well, it's either him or it's Morgan Freeman. It's a mystery. We don't know. Regards, Chuck from Regular City. Thanks for writing, Chuck. Last one. One more. He always, sa he always saves the nice ones for last. This is going to be terrible, isn't it? All right. We have to read them. This one's from uh, Sid Mika in Youngstown, Ohio. He says, Dear Creature Features, I used to watch a show just like yours when I lived in Cincinnati. I can't remember the name of it, but it was just like your show. Except the host was better. The movies were better too. It didn't have a butler like your show does. But it did have a midget named Tony that would juggle onions and was always pinching the co-host lady. You should get a midget for your show. He wouldn't need to juggle onions, but it would be cool if he pinched Tangella sometimes. Sid Mika, Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've witnessed once in my life, Sid, somebody pinch Tangella, and that person no longer has fingers. So I, I don't think that uh, plan would work, but uh, we'll, we'll take it into consideration, right? No. All right. That's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter, use the email address you see appearing under my shoe. Or if you'd like to send it by conventional means, use the mail postal address you see here. We'll be right back with Miss Kathy Coleman. But first, we've got to get back to Planet of the Dinosaurs. Stay with us. Thank you. somebody down to get it? Are you volunteering, Mr. Baylor? Hey, that was our food! We'll find food on the plateau. Let's wait for the others. Honey, I am pooped. Why don't you run down the hill and get me some water from that stream? Hey, wait a minute. Took two feet to make it down the hill, much left up again. Hey, Robinson Crusoe, get yourself a new girl Friday. So what's the hustle? I'm thirsty. Oh, gee, I didn't realize. In that case, you sit here, and uh, I'll have someone bring the stream up here for you. <laughs> you know, I could have you docked two weeks' pay for that kind of smart-ass attitude. Now, remember one thing, I'm still your employer. I'm his employer. Oh, I... Harvey Cool, he didn't mean anything. I'll get your water. Wait a minute, why should you be getting him water? He Just... is my employer. I'm her employer. Just get on your feet, he's not your owner. All right, I'll get the water. Let him get the water, let him get the water. 
this doesn't concern you. I'll get the water. Look, better get the water. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to get you in trouble. <laughs> Somebody, anybody, please get the water. Somebody get the water. Except don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Okay. Sorry. Sorry I bothered. <laughs> Gunga Din, uh, get water for the site. Hey, uh, uh, a <laughs> hey, young lady, it's, uh, it's not going to look too good on your efficiency record. What's this? I quit. Sorry about the two weeks' notice. Take it out of my vacation pay. Oh, uh. I think a chicken laid these. Well, I'll tell you something. It wasn't a streetcar, baby. Something? I will. I will say goodbye.
Hairstyling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon. It's Saturday night, and you are still watching Creature Features with me, but more importantly, her, Holly <laughs> from Land of the Lost, Kathy Coleman. That's amazing. I'm just beside myself. No, I'm beside you, so even better. This film, yes. Dead Astronauts from Dinosaurs. I never saw anything like that happen on your show. No, we actually, uh, the... Uh show was very high, highly guarded because it was a Saturday morning children's show. We weren't allowed, even like I would run sometimes through the jungle and I'd turn around and I'd say, oh my God, when I was supposed to look up at a dinosaur and they'd say, cut, cut, cut. You can't say God, you can't say God. Oh really? Yes, yeah, so I wasn't allowed to do that. And then <laughs> uh, the slee stacks, when they first brought them onto the show, they scared the children half to death. And right. so they said, we've got to slow them down. They're too real. It, it, they're scaring the kids so so that's why they're so slow yeah and it, but you know what's really weird is everybody says well why were you ever afraid of them they were so slow but right. if you look at any horror movie the bad guys always slow that's, that's true and the people are running they and they're be. tripping and then they're doing well, the all this ends. stuff right 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 so you gotta have time to do the whole thing yeah. right. so doing that show i mean you've you were like the youngest person on the show no it was Chaka. no phil phil Paley, was who was how old was he at the time he's a year younger than me oh he's not that much right he, he was not the baby no right? no and so, he and i used to get into all kinds of mischief together on the set because wesley was an adult right and we were the two kids on the set and he was so. supposed to be 16 but he was 18 like, at 21 oh he was 21 yeah at the time wow. but he you know he played with us but you know he hung out with the adults more so what were the other members like Okay, so to this day, Wesley and I are like real brother and sister. Right. Uh, we're on the same page. Uh, we think alike. We, we, we're almost like twins. We, we, you know, just send telepathic messages to each other. So you've stayed in touch, obviously. Yes. Ever since. And we do shows together all the time. But Phil and I were the same as we were when we were kids. We, 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 we argue. We get into fights with each other. But in a, in a good way, like how we did when we were right. kids. So, and the father, um, he is like a father to me in many ways. He's a mentor and uh, just a really good guy. I love him. That's wonderful. So, all, are you all up in California still? Um, I am not. I, I just moved up to uh, Reno, Nevada uh, I love two Reno. years ago. I do, too. I do, too. Sure, it's becoming it's the new little nice. Silicon Valley right. where we live, and we have an outdoor amphitheater, and it's really cool. I love it. But anyway, I lived in L.A. almost my whole life. Right. Uh, Phil's in L.A. still. Wesley's in Palm Springs. Nice. And the father is in uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Yeah. How would that happen? Uh, he's an actor's actor. He's not um, really, like, into the whole Hollywood scene. He wants to do, like, stage theater. Yeah, so he does. Yeah. He directs a uh, nice. small theater in, uh, How wonderful. in Wisconsin. Yeah. And do people recognize him? 
Uh, I don't think so. No. No, he's kind of a recluse. He oh. he like grows a lot of facial hair, and he's a real character, and he's really very very funny. Well, he's a director. He's a funny he, man. He needs to look like a director, maybe a bit of beret or something. No, I'm getting silly. We gotta get back to this film. Okay. They're waving good. to me, saying, "Get back to the film." Okay. Ready? Can't wait. You got Off it. Off we go. Planet of the Dinosaurs, right about now. This is it. We'll stay here. Stay here? What for? It's a good spot. Easy to defend. We'll stay here till we're rescued. Till we're rescued? When? When is that going to be, Lee? Let's face it, we're stuck here. This is our life now. This is our world. Our world. They know where the Odyssey was when they lost her signal. They'll come through subspace. They'll see this planet. They'll come here. When? I don't know when. But we'll be here and safe when they come. If something doesn't get us first. What do you propose we do? Go and hunt that thing down? You saw the size of it. Come on, you two. Jim, the captain's right. We can't go out and fight that thing. Listen, centuries ago on Earth, wolves used to wipe out whole villages until men went out and hunted them. Wolves learned. We've got to go out and teach them. We can't risk lives trying to tame dinosaurs. We'll stay here. We're safe. Safe? We're prisoners. Lee, there's land out there. Land to farm, land to build on. We're technicians. We can build a civilized community. Here we're nothing but savages hiding in caves. I say we stay. It would seem the most sensible thing to do. We can't risk any more lives. That's right. Our job is to stay alive, not conquer new planets. And what the hell were you doing on the Odyssey in the first place? All right, everybody, we're home. We've got work to do. Weapons to build, tools. We'll build up this wall over here, and then we'll be safe.
are you doing? Nothing. Just looking. It's so beautiful now. I could almost like this place. I could almost feel at home. What's over there? I don't know. Let's go see. one. Well, that's it. Yeah. Let's go tell him. Okay, it's finished. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Juice here, I fermented up. Listen, it uh, tastes kind of weird, but I'm gonna sit back a while. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> it tastes awful. <laughs> hmm, but it feels so good. <laughs> Maybe someone should stay on the alert. Oh, come on, boss. We don't build your stockade for you. Show a little appreciation. Have a drink with the hell. You don't have to ask me twice. How <laughs> <laughs> can you drink that stuff? Oh, darling, it's only the first cup. It's so bad after that. Your taste buds are dead from alcoholic poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, let me see. Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Beauvoir Vineyard 98, a vintage year. <laughs> the dance of desire. Vincent Tangella. Uh, this is Craig and Greg Tillman. Thank you very much for uh, reading our letter and making uh, Mr. Livingston laugh. We appreciate it very much and had a great, great time seeing it and having our letter read. Thank you very much. And the Tillman twins, love the show. Love you guys. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Every single one of his medical bills, everything, is just all taken care of. We have phenomenal research, outstanding clinical care, and the generosity of public, which allow us to treat patients regardless of what it takes. At St. Jude, families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food, because the only thing a family should worry about is helping their child live. 
Because of you. Gracias a ti. Because of you. There is St. Jude. Donate now at stjude.org. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. So tell me, Kathy Coleman from yes. Land of the Lost, the former Holly, did your dinosaur Dopey ever make these types of sounds? Not like that. He he made a, a cry, like a more like a whimper. He was a, a baby. He was a baby. Yeah, Bronto he, Brontosaurus? Yes. yes. And he just he just like uh, uh, kind of like that. Right. Like a I know, like I, an off I horn. I remember it was like a squeaky like yeah. almost like a duck sound. That was that was adorable. So you had to like ride like a CGI type. Yeah, it was green chroma key. Thing. That's what they called right, it back then. Right. It's like they, a green they call screen. It that now? They do it that now. But ours was like a blue color, and uh, right. he was just a big circular uh, piece of chroma key. And I just got on it, and then they it. mixed it. Right. They ran the tape and the film, right. and so there what I do you was. think about our little Holly? I love it. I love it. Isn't she adorable? She, adorable. Adorable. You know, typically, we have lunch boxes and they're they're cartoons of us and you look like you just like popped right off of our lunch box. You know, typically she looks a bit more diabolical than this. I tried to get get her to dress like this every day and she said no when she speaks. It's adorable but and thank she's, you. She's thank only you so much. You. I love it. Only for you, only for you. So, you were telling me during the break that this whole thing with the bangs and the hair was not the, the design of the show, it was your mother. Well, my mom, uh, she dressed me basically almost in the exact outfit for the show, for my interviews. Right. And then they just, they, they, when I went for wardrobe, they, they pretty much picked almost the exact same outfit that my mom had That's amazing. put me in. Yeah. And then as far as the bangs, you, you mentioned bangs. Right. Uh, yeah, my mother would never let me grow my bangs out. She always oh wanted goodness. me to have bangs. And she did my hair every day on the set. I went into makeup, but once I was out of makeup, my mom would take over and do my hair. And she did the oh same goodness. thing as, as your hairdresser here does, the old aunt. Ah. <laughs> she did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, my funny. mom, we were laughing, but my mother was famous for that. She must have been so proud of you. There's something that's in the, you know, the saliva that makes your hair behave. Right, right, no, no, but she was with you every day, every, yes. every shoot. Yeah. So how long was a typical shoot? I would get into makeup around 7 a.m. and I would be done by about six o'clock at night. But we had three hours of school right. every day that had to be done. So how many how many days were the five days? Five days. And we had shoot. to what leave. What episode? No, two episodes a week. Oh. We were shooting two episodes a week, and we had to leave an hour early every day because we lived outside of Hollywood. Right. And because I had the pony. So we oh. were living in like, you know, a, a area that was zoned for horses. So my days were even extended even longer. So you would have to go home and take care of your pony. I could I could only do that on the weekends. So you, come Friday night, that's you, where my mother You had a would long commute. Me. Yes. Because of a pony. If yes. you hadn't got that pony, <laughs> right. As your mother promised. No, but I would I got in trouble one time on the set because I, I I didn't know my lines, but I was so tired one night that my sister, who used to, she was the pre, uh, president of the Land of Lost Fan Club. I want to get into this in the next segment. Okay, but anyway, she used to sit up with me at night and study my lines, and um, I was just falling asleep while she was reading them with me. And uh, too much work for a young lady. Yeah, I got in trouble. Right. All right, <laughs> let's get back to this film, Play of the okay. Dinosaurs, and when we come back, we're going to learn more about this fan club you had. Okay. Have I bet you have? I bet she has one now. All right, back to Planet of the Dinosaurs. We'll be right back. I just had a party today. Everyone is if you let themselves be. <laughs> oh, Jim, have some compassion. Lee's doing the very best he can. I know. But out here, it's not enough. He's not like you. He doesn't always know what's right. Don't be sarcastic. I'm not. 
Only the last few weeks, I've just watched you become more rigid, invulnerable, and godlike. <laughs> Have pity on us mortals. Lee is nice. Lee is kind. Lee is weak. Don't be cruel. On this world, you have two choices. Be cruel or die. I don't ever want to have to make that choice, Jim. Civilization is like that uniform you're wearing. It's getting dirty and torn. And pretty soon, it's going to rot away. You had better decide what you're going to wear then. I'll find something. I'll find something soft and warm and protective. You all have a lot to learn. You all? Why not we? We, Jim. Forgive us, we're only human, but... We're lonely, Jim. And we're frightened. And God help us, a little drunk. Enjoy your party. I'll stand guard. Jim! If you ever need anyone... Then, a farmer says, well, I don't have any daughters, but I do have a son that's a traveling salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> well, we're all as safe as if we were home in bed. <laughs> hey, happy new world. Happy, happy new, new world. world. Yeah. Should old acquaintance Chuck? I sent him to lay out some astro reflectors. Don't worry, he'll be all right. It's just that, well, sometimes he doesn't seem as alert as he should be. You want to go out after him? Keep an eye on him? I sent him out over those rocks over there. Maybe I should just go and give him a hand. Sure. Chuck, you haven't finished laying out the reflectors. We have to lay them out if we want to be rescued. What's the use? Tell me how they work. In the normal survey of a new planet, you first explore it with scanner rays. The myphonian coating on the reflectors would bounce the rays right back to the ship. Any search party scanning this planet could pinpoint right where to find us. That's terrific. If there was a search party in this section of the galaxy. We have to believe there is, or will be. When? Theoretically, the Mythonian could bounce back signals forever, couldn't it? Yeah, so in 10 years, somebody sees the signals and comes on down. Where would we be? I don't know. We don't think 10 years ahead. We just do what we have to today. Oh, maybe you're right. 
Maybe we're wasting our time. We could set the reflectors out and something will just come along and eat them. No. No, Mythonian tastes terrible. What? My father was an astrophysicist. When I was a little kid, I thought Mythonian was the most wonderful thing in the world. I tasted some. It, it tastes like old socks. <laughs> Well, guess I'd better get back to work. If we ever want to get rescued, these reflectors have got to start sending out their signals now. I'll help. No, you can. You go back to camp. I'll finish this. Okay? Killed. From now on, no one goes anywhere alone. We work in pairs. This is that thing's hunting ground, and it's coming back unless we make sure it doesn't. How do we do that? Hunt it. Kill it. Are you crazy? Some of us could get maimed or killed. So we wait till that thing gets hungry and comes back? No. I say we get it now while it's hurt. Come on, now. They're right, you know. I'm tired of hiding and jumping at every sound. God, I just want to bite back. Lee, they need this. They've got to do it. The, the fear, the tension, it's doing something to all of us. This way. It's actually this way. Follow me. Down here. His footprints disappeared. Looks like some other animal was here. He must have gotten our friend. Yeah, and by the looks of it, he was several times bigger than that thing you were hunting.
You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. You said you are extremely terrifying. Mm. Just the scariest undead subhuman mm. thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <sighs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. <sighs> Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. What do you see? In the fire. You were staring at it so intently, I thought maybe you were hypnotized, or seeing visions. I was just wondering how many other things we're going to have to get used to. Things like eating dinosaurs. Nyla, what's wrong with Lee? What do you mean? He's so tense lately. We're all tense. You can't be relaxed in a situation like this. I mean, he gives an order. Then he seems uncertain, insecure, as if he doubts the decision he's made. It's not easy making decisions when it could be a matter of life or death. I'm not questioning his ability, but it is limited by his experience. You think Jim could do better? Jim has had more space travel than Lee. He's been in more alien worlds. Lee has, well, I know he was top of his class at the academy. He has an excellent record since, but Lee will do what he thinks is right. After all, we've got to have rules, even on this world. And Lee is the captain? Right. And you, of course, always go by the rules. Yes. Do you realize that if anything happened to Lee, and if we went by the rules, you'd be in charge? Could you lead us? Could you keep us alive better than Jim?
There it is. What? Memories. Earth and home. I can see it in the fire. Floating out there in space millions of miles away. Just another planet. Yet when I think of it, I could cry. I wish I could see what you do, Charlotte. Ah, there it is. Poor, beautiful, tired old Earth. I wonder if I'll ever see you again. Whatever it is, it's nearby. What are you saying? Mike said it. That's a hunting cry. I don't think it'll attack us. We can't wait around to find out. Jim, you saw the size of those prints. How are we going to deal with an animal that big? Besides, we're safe here in the stockade. Are we? What if it attacks outside the stockade? Are we going to let it pick the time and place it decides to kill us? We've got to hunt it down now in its lair and kill it. Jim, you're crazy. How are we going to kill a thing that big? That gun wouldn't even kill the little beast. It's an animal, a dumb animal. We're rational thinking human beings. We'll find a way. No. No, we shouldn't risk any more lives just because you want to play Tarzan. You fools. Jim's right. What are we going to do? Sit around here like cattle in a pen waiting for that thing to come get us? Millions of years ago on Earth, an ape, an ape took a club and killed his first predator. Well, we've got to kill that thing or, or that something inside of us, that dignity that makes us human. Fear's going to kill that. You're the navigator, Chuck. Which one is Earth? You can't see it from here, unless you close your eyes. See it? I see a farm in Ohio on a fall morning. There's still some mist on the ground. Pale, pale blue mist. I told you. It's not really so far away. Chuck, take me home. Hang on. Just hang on.
This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, Kathy. Coleman, yes, Vincent. From Land of the Lost. This film is going down to roads with all this fighting over women thing. And it reminds me of some film that came out that had a similar title to your show with Will Ferrell. I did not like that film. I shall confess right here now in front of all our viewers. That's okay. That's okay. I, I wasn't crazy about it myself. No, but it was... And then they cut us out of it, which uh, at so first I wasn't really crazy about she that. She had a cameo with... Wesley. Wesley. Will. Will. And, they and we it shot out. it in the La, La Brea Tar Pits in the museum there. And uh, yeah, they, they decided to go with the Matt Lauer ending. It was just a ending. quick, tiny scene, right? Yeah, it was like really weird. We played uh, parking attendants. I didn't even get it. I was all dressed it up, It made no too. sense, no. And I was a parking attendant. So if you want to see this scene, you have to search for it on YouTube. I think it's like the original... Land of the Lost Cast, meet the new Land of the Lost Cast. Yeah, yeah it was The weird. film is rubbish. Don't watch the film. Don't. <laughs> I, they should watch the clip just to see you in it. But the film you know, so people are actually introducing our show to their children. And so I have like first and second and third generations so do come up to my table. Well. Yeah. You know, the show was on long before. Little we kids came are coming up and they can point to the pictures at my table and they know all the names of the characters and the names of the dinosaurs of and stuff. It's amazing. Yeah, well, it's still a children's show. Yeah. It's still valid. You know, and the children come to our shows and they love Tangella. Oh, despite I'm sure. Despite the fact that she's always walking around with weapons and destroying some of our staff. Like Margot Robbie. Oh, yeah, no, but she's not. She's different. She's just like her, but different. Okay. That was, so what was the character called? Margot Robbie, what character did she, she do? Harley Quinn. Harley yeah, Quinn. Yeah. You know, no, Livingston's not a like big that. fan of Harley Quinn. He likes women with bats. I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, is that like the flying bats? <laughs> the flying. He like, all right, he okay. likes women with flying bats, like the vampire. I only players. had a wand. A wand. That's all I had. On not on your show. Yes, I did. I had you a had wand. You had a wand on your show. Yeah, it put me in a in a trance. I I missed this episode. I have a photo of it. I'll show it to you. All right, I want to see this. Okay. And then your fan club, which your sister operated. She started the original fan club. Right. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was at a convention, and somebody came up to my table with the original fan club memorabilia it had like the, the card, the card, the card. and yeah, yeah and all the little you know back behind the scenes details that she would oh, add so and yeah so that was really cool all right well tell her i want to join this club but first we gotta get back to this film <gasps> okay no well i was gonna say one other thing go ahead you have a friend named john provost right i have no we, have, we all have a friend named john okay, provost but you know john of course my sister my other sister was the president of his fan club isn't that funny? So my sisters are just like you, fan club fanatics. You come from a family of entrepreneurs. <laughs> That's right. That's what you are. All right. So okay. let's let's get back to this film. When we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next and how we can learn more about your stuff. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Off we go. Back to Planet of the Dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. tracks all over the area. This lab must be nearby. A cave! 
And that stench. It seems to be coming from there. We found it. That thing must live here. Let's go. kill that thing. We can use those poison berries. Good. Lee, it might work. Their juice rubbed on spears and arrow tips. Why face the thing? Let's go out, kill a creature, stuff it with the berries, and put it outside its lair. It's too uncertain. Maybe he can smell these things. Maybe he knows they're poison. I'm for a direct attack. The bait idea seems more sensible. It'd be safer. And we know the berries work in the digestive tract. What effect they'll have, if any, in the blood system isn't certain. Poison's poison. And you said they were very, very potent. No. I'd buy Lee's idea first. Poison bait. No, I agree with Jim. What if it doesn't eat carrion? There's too many ifs. Let's try Lee's bait idea first. If it doesn't work, we've lost nothing. Then we can try Jim's more direct method. All right. Let's get to work. You three go gather the berries. Chuck, come with us. <laughs>
we can do from now. What do we do now, Jim? We'll plant stakes in the ground. Big ones. Except with the poison from the berries. Then we lure the beast onto them. And if it's angry enough and stupid as I think it is, it'll impale itself on the poison stakes. Well, let's get to work. Where do we start? <laughs> Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Leaving the valley. Where are we going, Lee? Away from that. Where are we going? There's a valley west of here. I scouted it yesterday. We'll be safe there? You guarantee us completely safe? No more spiders, no more dinosaurs, all peace and quiet just over the next hill? You're not risking any more lives trying to kill that thing. We're leaving here. Lee, you're a fool. I'm taking everyone, and we're leaving here. Go ahead and run, Lee. You've got a whole damn world to run in. But you're gonna have to run alone. We're not going with you. I'm in charge here. You'll do as I say. Stop working. Pack up. We're leaving. Nobody's going. No one's listening to you anymore. You're just another guy around here. That uniform means nothing. Maybe this means something. I say we go. I'm the leader here. If you think differently, prove it. I've always said you had to fight for what you really wanted. Sometimes aggression is necessary. I was right. But I won't fight you. Not now. Not while that beast is still alive. He's coming! He'll smash everything, all our work. We're not ready. Hey! Let him go. He knows what he's doing.
have to do. Did you have a nice walk? I thought I'd give our friend a little exercise. We're ready. Just give us the word. Let's do it. Let's go. Supper's almost ready. What is it tonight? Lizard again? No. We had that last night. Today we're having filet of swamp monster. You know, it's getting so I like that. We're almost finished. We'll be right there. Okay. Somehow it doesn't really matter anymore.
And that brings the fly swatter down on Grumpy, or the version of it, right? Well, they they killed him, their dinosaur, their T-Rex. No, we, we kept Grumpy at bay with the, it's like a giant toothpick, but right. we called it the fly swatter. Right, it would take two of you to ram it into Yeah, sometimes three of us. Non-existent <laughs> throat. Right. You had no, like, you open it up. Right. Like it <laughs> I, you know, I like that. That's the way. It was a kid's show. It is a kid's show. He cannot be scary. He didn't really have much teeth either, did he? No, he was very gummy. Gummy. Yes. Like Gumby. Yes. I love Gumby. But I like this book more than Gumby. Run, Holly, run. This is your book. Yeah. Well, you that was this. a line that was said a lot oh, on the show. Of course. By Wesley. This is a beautiful book. It is so thick. There's a lot of stories in there. No, no. I've well, had a big life. I've, I've, I've done a lot of no, uh, I, I'm reading things. all about it at this moment as yeah. we speak. But, you know, I like the photographs. You've got, she's got photos of when she was young. And the horse, this is a horse here, right? Yes. What was his name? Comanche. Comanche. But and there's actually a picture in there of Phil and I before Land of the Lost. Uh, no, it's after that other one. It's okay. Oh, here. Well, that's us on the set with our right. dressing room right. tags. All right. Well, uh, okay, I think anyway. we, should, we should have these... People buy the book if they want to see that photograph. I would right. love them to. It's yeah. available on Amazon. Amazon. And right. I do bring them. When I do the Comic-Con conventions, I bring books with me so that I can autograph them because I can't personally autograph a book if you get it on Amazon. Right. Of course not. But it's even got, like, set layout from the show. Yeah, because we had two sound stages. One's the interior, one's the exterior. So I just, it's, it's really crude, but I wanted to give people an idea of what it looked like when I walked in on the set in the morning. This is wonderful. Yeah. All this. And then you also brought this. Yes, my buddy. Tell us the, the story staff. behind that. Well, I actually got this from a fan in Atlanta at a show called Dragon Con. And, Did they uh, make he, it? Yes. He, this man walked by me and he had that. And I was like, oh my God, that is, and see, I get to right. say God on your show. That's so funny. That's important. I know. I would say the same thing. And I said, that is incredible. That's very very close to what they actually look like. Right. And he said, do you want me to leave it on your table for the day? And I said, I would love that. And then later in the day when he came to pick it up, he says, you know what? I'll sell it to you if you want. So I bought it. And he's been with me now for about 10 years. Oh, my goodness. And he goes to every show. I've never seen anything like this. So th these are not mass produced? No, not like this. No. That's beautiful. No, they have rubber ones, but not like this. Because right. the original suits were made out of wetsuit material. Oh, that must have been discomforting to wear and mike actors. westmore all of our writers i don't know if you know this but all of our writers were star trek writers right david and gerald yes he wrote Tr right. trouble with tribbles for right. star trek but anyway he was our head writer and then uh makeup was mike westmore who was also star trek and he's the one who made the sleaze stack that is absolutely remarkable so you say it shows you can get these or yes. on amazon yes but if you go to a show that you're attending right you can buy and them. I, I'm and doing about eight shows this year. I want to hear about your shows. Well, I'm doing one that I, I really love to do. It's in New Jersey. It's called Chiller. And it's it's oh, a cool one. Yeah, one. Chiller's fun because it's kind of rock and roll combined right. with pop culture. Right. And and I know everybody there, and they're my friends. So uh, have a good time there. And I have a couple, uh, one in Pennsylvania that I know of, and I have... Uh, three on the west coast and uh pensacola you, you're more busy than we are that's the okay. this is the way it should be though i love it i do one a month if i could so there's a, a, pl a place on facebook one can go yes I, I always post where i'm going on facebook so how do we find you on facebook kathy coleman so is it like a page yeah like a, a fan page yeah and, and so I talk to all my fans. I'm, I'm like, I, I'm in constant contact with people. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So she's accessible, like she was for us. Yeah. So they just go to Facebook and say, Kathy Coleman. And they friend request me. Or oh, you, you could just go to your my... your personal Facebook page? <gasps> you need to create an actual, like, page. A well, thing. I do. I, it's, I have, like... I'm in the regular cycle of Facebook, but I also, if you want to friend request me, then we can do oh. personal messages. Look at this. You See? have an opportunity to f be friends with Kathy Coleman, like me. Yeah. 
Isn't that wonderful? No, you it's know, I, I was going to tell you, I've I've had quite a few child stars. I like stars. being your friend, Vincent. By no, the way, no, we're going to be friends after this. Uh, I, I hope so. I know so. how to use it now. Facebook. I hope so. I've learned how to yeah, use it. Yeah, friend request me. No, but I was going to say, there's so many. I, I don't want to put you in this position, but child actors mm -hmm. who have like grown into mm -hmm. normal people. And so few of them are like as together as you are, as nice and friendly and accessible. Well, it's you know refreshing. what? That's what's in that book. And, and the reason why is here. Well, no, I have been through the washing machine of life, trust me. And, and I got thrown out and I just have some wrinkles. But, you know, other than that, um, there were just lessons that I had to learn. And I don't hold, I'm not bitter about anything, but all the stories. It's like my window, my curtains on my window of my life are wide open. So everybody can see. Yes, yes, absolutely. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. You're a wonderful guest. Thank as you so much. As far as you guys are concerned, you know, I, it's nice that you guys tuned in tonight because you would have been very sad if you had missed this one, right? Right, Tangela? Of course. So, uh, but next <laughs> week, uh, who, who do we have next week? I think we have a juggler or something. They're going to have like quite an actor follow after you. So you guys come back next week. Another movie, another guest. Have fun. So, Kathy. Looking at her in this outfit and you here, I'm thinking we have our own version of Land of the Lost and perhaps I could like represent like Wesley. Yeah, with that hair, you should be a Pakuni.